Hi there! The new space industry claims to be doing things differently and among the things it often claims is that it's using agile development methods to design products and services in a faster and cheaper way. Is this really true? Let us explore the issue in a bit more detail and let us compare Agile to the more traditional product development processes, such as stage gate and spiral development. They have allowed space systems to be designed to operate very reliably for a long period of time under the very harsh environmental conditions of space. And actually, there is a good reason why space systems have been designed and operated for a long time with very tight formal processes. Traditional missions cost hundreds of millions of euros. They often require 7 to 10 years to develop and operate in space for a decade or more. Think of, for example, those large stationary spacecraft for telecommunications or all the missions that have been sent to Mars. In the traditional systems engineering process, projects go through a number of stages and gates, such as project reviews and milestones. This is the so-called stage gate model of product development. In a typical engineering project, we structure design, development, operations and disposal into a project lifecycle. We have an initial phase where we codify the needs of the user in a number of prescriptive statements. We call this the user requirements definition phase. Following this phase, we start exploring potential concepts of the engineering solution. And as soon as we converge on one, we start specifying the system to be designed. Acquisition plans are put in place to buy those components we intend to use off the shelf. We follow with development, phase by sequential design reviews, and we put in place a rigorous testing plan, or more precisely put, a verification and validation plan. When this is done, the system is put into operations, maintained, and eventually disposed. This entire set of activities is well described in the so-called V model, which takes its name from the way in which it is usually illustrated, like in this slide. The V model stresses the idea of iterations. The design of a complex engineering system such as a spacecraft is not a linear process. It goes through iterations, which are not explicitly shown in this chart. It means that the engineers need to go back and forth the V in order to successfully design and eventually implement. Iterations are a key word in this process, and I would like you to remember it as we compare this process to other product development processes. One of these processes is the so-called spiral development process. In the idea of the spiral PDP, the system is developed by prototype iterations until achievement of the operational prototype. The development is iterated as in a spiral, and the customers involved at each iteration provide feedback, what we call validation, in addition to the steps that the engineering team takes to verify the system through a rigorous testing plan. And this is how space engineering practice has been evolving for decades to come up with those marvelous space missions that we all know. In the meantime, in the software industry, Something has been evolving over the years, specifically around the idea of iterative and incremental development methods, on the same line of the spiral PDP but brought to the screen. And more precisely, in 2001, the Agile Manifesto was published. The manifesto is the result of the meeting in 2001 of 17 software developers who had experimented with different ways of doing software over the previous two decades. This manifesto is considered by many as the foundations of Agile engineering. It advocates for rapid responses to changes, continuous involvement of the customer, and developing software products through rapid sequential iterations and continuous deployment of minimum viable products, also known as MVPs. Agile is a very complex and rich topic, which would require a video series by itself. Suffice it to say, for our purposes, that Agile has proven to be successful in many software projects, and it is considered by many, de facto, the standard way of working in the software engineering industry. Agile has incarnated itself into many different product development frameworks. Perhaps the most popular of those is the use of Kanban boards in the context of Scrum. What are Kanban boards and what is Scrum? Well, Scrum in essence is a very granular way to structure work. Instead of following the stage gate model that we described before, and instead of going through a requirements definition process in Scrum, engineering create the so-called epics, which are descriptions of the functions required by the system from the customer point of view. Those epics are then broken down into user stories, that is, smaller pieces of the project which are then decomposed into tasks. Tasks are supposed to be actionable and with clear success criteria. They are organized in backlogs, they are executed in sprints in one week or two. At each sprint there is a review with the customer and ideally a workable MVP. The work allocation of the next sprint is decided by loading tasks from the backlog and adapting according to the customer feedback. 
This is Scrum in very, very simplified terms. A popular way to organize Scrum is through the use of a Kanban board as the one shown here. Tasks are organized in sticky notes that are moved from backlog to different states, such as to do, in progress, in review, and done. This is one of the reasons why the process gains so much traction in the industry. It is visual, it is actionable, and boards are illustrated on the walls of the office where agile teams organize standard meetings every morning and altogether organize the work of the day. This is perhaps one of the reasons why Agile Scrum became so popular in companies. Who does not want their teams to be agile, right? Scrum is actionable, visual, it promotes co-creation in the team, and it's easy to understand. There are several mechanisms in Scrum that I'm not covering in this video that are also indeed conducive to fostering team spirit. How does this translate into systems engineering of space hardware? Well, this is something new and is not yet fully understood. The Systems Engineering Handbook of INCOSI, the International Council of System Engineering, started exploring Agile in the context of a C, and they identified key principles, including the three you see here on this chart. Number one, enabling reconfiguration of goals, requirements, plans, and assets predictably. Number two, enabling changes to the product during development and fabrication predictably. And number three, enabling broad-level systems thinking to inform real-time decision-making as requirements and understanding evolve. New space companies started actively exploring agile development processes for their products. And one of the things this means, for example, is that some companies may launch miniaturized spacecraft as MVPs, solely for the purpose of learning and iteratively improving their baseline. This development approach, however, assumes frequent availability of launch opportunities and relatively cost to launch. Agile, by definition, increases the number of iterations in the development as this is the way in which the process ensures flexibility to changing customer requirements. This is illustrated, with a bit of humor of course, in this comic by Park Birkus from ArcadeRage.com. He compares the waterfall method, what we previously referred to as stage gate model, to agile development. In Waterfall, the team wants to build a rocket to go to Mars. It goes forward building the rocket, testing it, and eventually goes to Mars. The team started with a very clear customer directive and ended up with the desired result. In the Agile world, however, the team wants to go to Mars, probably. They start building a rocket, then they realize they want to go to Uranus and mo make modifications. Eventually, at the end of the project, the team ends up landing on the moon. <laughs> this is, of course, a joke and an exaggeration, but it does bring forward some fundamental truth. It is not always clear that Agile is the best way of working for a project, especially for engineering projects that involve the development, assembly, integration, and testing of hardware. Why so? Well, there are fundamental differences between a software and a hardware project, as there are fundamental differences between an engineering development projects and a process development project. Is the same. In software, Agile works relatively well in most cases for a simple reason. Iterations are quote-unquote free and relatively fast to execute. In other words, when you write a piece of code, you can easily recompile the thing and you see the result of your action. Good software is designed through modular approaches. This means that you can take a module out, for example an application or a computer driver, redesign and redeploy within an integrated system. Such flexibility is not easy at all to achieve in hardware systems. Hardware is time-consuming to manufacture, let alone the fact that parts need to be ordered from suppliers and delivery takes time. It is generally harder, therefore, to have an incremental iterative approach in hardware development. From a conceptual point of view, four key points really matter in space hardware development, or by any means, in all types of hardware projects. The cost of a single iteration, the time to execute an iteration, the interdependencies between tasks and the synchronization of the project among all involved stakeholders, including, for example, partners, suppliers, and the customer. Agile, by definition, leads to an increase of the number of iterations in product development. If iterations are expensive or time-consuming to execute, the overall project programmatic performance will indeed be worse than the baseline remodel type of development. Agile Scrum asks for work to be broken down into tasks assigned to individuals. If those tasks are highly dependent, then individual execution of the tasks will inevitably lead to an increase in the number of iterations. Take a typical spacecraft design problem, for example. The design of the power subsystem of the satellite depends on the payload design requirements that drive attitude determination and control requirements, which in turn drive the design of the power subsystem. Such feedback loops in spacecraft design are well known and taken care of 
by classical design methodologies, such as, for example, concurrent engineering. In Agile, task interdependencies are explicitly accounted for or represented. They are not, actually. Regarding the synchronization issue with stakeholders, the key problem is indeed with suppliers and partners. If our project relies on several custom hardware parts, an agile way of working will probably be inefficient because each iteration will imply lead time from the supplier as well as build time. If we rely on COTS components, which is indeed a cornerstone or feature of new space, we might perhaps work on inventory to mitigate the issue, but again, the problem is not trivial and requires careful process design and planning. Unfortunately, tightly process-driven work is not exactly what Agile advocates for. So in short, does Agile work for Hasplis Hardware or not? Should new space company adopt Agile with a working or not? Well, the answer is, in my opinion, not necessarily, and certainly not for the entire length of the project. Systems engineers need to critically evaluate the cost and time of iterations, as well as interdependencies among the tasks, and determine which portions of the project are more suited to Agile, and which might suit better to be controlled under a stage gate approach. Such evaluation is not trivial at all, and requires structured approaches. One needs to consider not only the design baseline, but also, for example, make versus buy decisions, partner structures, supply chain, manufacturing, and all other engineering considerations that are in the project. Agile comes at the cost, and certain overhead in the number of iterations that are involved in the development. In a certain sense, Agile goes against systems engineering, with which space systems have been traditionally conceived, designed, and operated. There are several outstanding questions that are not yet systematically addressed and understood by the Agile engineering community in space hardware. For instance, how to optimally decompose a project into tasks, how to estimate and schedule for tasks, how to account for interdependencies in task definition, or how to organize an Agile team in a framework where you have a consortium with partners operated under Agile, others that are not. Now, these are examples of some of the outstanding issues that we're addressing in our research activity in this field. If you want to know more, you can click on the links here to check out our first three articles in this area that we co-author with two PhD students, Nicola Garzaniti and Simone Pretore. In these papers, we started looking at three key issues. Firstly, we analyzed the effectiveness of Scrum methodology in an actual space hardware development project, uh, which was a payload for CubeSats that we developed with our engineering team. And in our project, we came to the conclusion that the pure Agile development was not exactly bringing us the results that we originally expected. And we started understanding the issues brought by the increase in the number of iterations by Agile. In the second paper, we explored the interactions between Agile and non-Agile teams within consortiums and provided the first definition of hybrid product development. Lastly, in this paper that we presented at the International Strategical Congress of 2019 in Washington, D.C., we have shown how it is possible to develop some quantitative tools to provide more scientific rigor in estimating efforts in backlog development for scrum boards. We are still actively researching in the area and we will publish more results of our investigation in the coming months. In summary, the effectiveness of Agile versus other development approaches in new space projects is highly dependent on the nature of the system being designed. How much does an iteration take in terms of cost and schedule? how interconnected are the tasks within a backlog, and how complex is the stakeholder structure of the project. Certainly, new space is benefiting from agile ways of working, which makes a difference in speed and execution compared to traditional institutional projects. On the other hand, my recommendation is to critically examine the project and not go the agile way blindly without thinking very carefully at its intended and unintended implications. This is one of the key lessons of systems engineering theory, Always have a system view when implementing projects and consider carefully dependencies and interactions between stakeholders and project elements at the interfaces. This is indeed a fascinating area of work and I look forward to your comments on your experience implementing Agile in new space project. Like this video, subscribe to the channel and let's discuss in the comments on this important, very important topic. Thank you very much.